It's the Create Day. So I found both of these items at the thrift store. Um, this nice ribbed glass jar and a wooden oval tray. I'm going to start with the jar and I wanted to um, kind of replicate the texture of a beehive. So I um, am going to decoupage some paper towel on it, but I um, wanted to be able to get it down into the grooves of this jar so I did spritz it with my little water mister um, just to make it a little easier to work with because it's just kind of got a lot of texture on it and a little bit thicker than like if you were to use a tissue paper and I'm just pressing it down with my fingers after applying the Mod Podge underneath and uh, I'm going to use my brush to get into all those recessed little groove areas. Just tearing off the excess of the paper towel so that it lays nice and flat. So I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge on the edges to get it to lay down. And now here's where I'm um, smoothing that paper towel into the recessed ridges. And I just repeated that process all the way around the jar. Now I'm going to give this a coat of antique gold paint. And I did the same um, paper towel decoupage process on the lid. I'm giving it its first coat of paint too. So now I'm just mixing that same antique gold paint with some baking powder. I've used the baking soda before. I wanted to try the baking powder because it's supposed to give it a fluffier texture. Um, and it was a little bit. I mean, I didn't, I guess if you added more baking powder, it would be like really fluffy. But I just wanted to make sure I had some nice texture on there and that worked out fine. So now I'm going in with my uh, dark brown paint espresso and a fine tip brush so that I can paint down into the recesses um, to give more depth. tedious pro uh, process, but um, simple at the same time. And so now I have some nautical rope. I just picked this up from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just hot gluing that around this top portion of the jar. I end up doing two um, ropes around that part. and I just do the same piece of rope around the knob on the top of the lid.
Just securing it with hot glue. And now we need to start making this thing look a little more realistic. So I'm uh, taking my darker brown paint that I used to paint the recessed areas and dry brushing it um, over, like kind of trying to blend it out from those recessed areas. And I'm just burning the fuzzies off the rope because I need to paint the rope too. Actually, this isn't the dark brown paint. This is the lighter color of brown that I have. I think. I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, if I paint the knob here, that's that's the lighter brown, not the dark. Yeah, so this is a lighter color called um, nutmeg. And so now with my little sea sponge, which I um, dampened up with my little mister, my water mister, um, I'm just uh, sponging on some of the, a little bit of the gold um, color with uh, some of the light brown. Just kind of alternating and mixing them together and just trying to um, fade out some of those sharp colors and lines. And that's the original color on the bottom so you can see what a difference we've made already. And I wanted to go ahead and add a little opening hole on the front so I rolled out some air dry clay made a little circle and then did a little rope piece around it. Um, but I absolutely did not like this, how it looked. Every time I looked at it, all I saw was Mr. Bill's face, his mouth. So I took it off before the glue dried. Okay, so I have my tray ready. I did a coat of shellac on it and then two coats of cottage white chalk paint. And I thought it was interesting that I'm getting this uh, crackling effect there and over here. Um, I don't know what caused that. Um, I'm actually okay with it. I think it adds to it, but uh, if you know what I did in the process that would cause that, let me know. So the next thing I want to do is add these decorative little chipboard pieces. I have a bee and some honeycomb. So I thought I would do these off to this side. Um, the jar can go over on the other side. And I uh, thought I would do a pattern like that. Um, so what I need to do is paint underneath the colors of the bee and the honeycomb. So I'm going to just, I think, trace around these pieces and then I'll know where to put my paint. So I'm just tracing around the outside of the bee and the honeycomb. And I'm going with the antique gold and the honeycomb color, uh, it's like a lighter brown. I'm just going to fill in the areas of the bee, um, like the wings, and then the insides of the little honeycombs. I'm trying to use like um, like on the honeycomb I'm going with a little bit darker mixture on the outside and a little bit lighter more gold on the inside and 
just checking to see if I need to touch any areas up. That's how we look so far. And now it's time to paint our chipboard. The bee is getting a coat of black just on his head and um, the outline of his body and his little stripes on his back and just I go around the, uh, the perimeter of the wings but not filling in the whole uh, wing I don't want everything to be black I'm just kind of smudging it off so it doesn't look like it's a really harsh line I want it to look just a little faded Now we're using the dark brown espresso and the antique gold to do the honeycomb. Um, I'm just like doing a little bit of one color and a little bit of another color. There's no like um, specific way. I just I just paint it until it looks like how I think it should look. Um, and on the oh I'm. Um, I'm misting my brush because for the wings I don't want it to be such a solid color. I want it to just, um, it wouldn't be translucent because it's uh, acrylic paint, but just not as thick and harsh as the full paint color. And so now like on this honeycomb, I'm highlighting with the lighter gold color. Again, it's just like I just mess with it until I like how it looks so there's no wrong or right way to do this and here on the wings I'm highlighting with a lighter yellow that was called honey mustard just kind of like a little dry brush technique to lighten it up I wanted it to look more like how bees wings look like how you can see through them of course you can't see through chipboard so I'm just trying to give the illusion that that they're just lighter um, so now I'm just with some medium uh, fine grit sandpaper just kind of roughing up the edges of the tray and now it's time to do our little honey dipper so I'm covering it with uh, clear wax so I can apply the antiquing wax and be able to rub it off have a little more control over it so that it doesn't get too dark because this wood is um, really porous like it's it's completely unfinished and we'll soak all that in and that's how that looks and so now I'm going to glue on our bee and our honeycomb with some tacky glue And I wanted to make a little um, wood bead garland to put around to hang the honey dipper from. So I just put these little beads on skewers and I'm painting them in the cottage white, the antique gold, and the lighter brown called honeycomb. Now that I have those all painted and they're dry, I wrap some tape around the end of this waxed uh, cord that I have and I'm just threading the, them through um, onto this cord. And then I'm just checking to see if I've got enough on there. 
needed a few more, I think, but now we're going to add a bigger bead. So I'm just cutting off um, enough of a length that I'll have, you know, I'm just guessing at how much I'll need to, to finish this off. And I'm putting both ends of the cord through the bigger bead, which was not easy. <clears throat> but with the help of one of my little skewers, I was able to get it through. And then I just double knotted it and added a little bit of hot glue to make sure it was secure. And now I'm just going to wrap that twine around the um, honey dipper stick. I thought I would really like this cord because it was black, but um, once I got it all wrapped on there, to me it just looked like duct tape. So I ended up doing some of the um, antiquing wax over that as well. So now I'm applying a coat of clear wax over the entire tray. And then I can go in with my antiquing wax. I'm putting it straight onto that cord, um, trying to add something to it so it just doesn't look so shiny and duct tape-ish. And then for the beads, I'm um, actually, I just brush the antique wax on there and then just rub it with my fingers. To me, that was the easiest way to to get um, that wax on there. And now we need to do a little antiquing wax on the tray. I didn't want it to be really dark, um, that's why I added the clear wax first, but I still got um, more on here than I had intended to. So I ended up having to go in and um, try, to, try to remove a little bit of it with the clear wax and that wasn't enough and I like how, it, see how it shows the uh, crackle there, I, I did, I like that. I just, I just wanted it to look kind of dirty. I mean, this whole project is kind of just got that primitive kind of dirty look to it. But it, again, it was just a little bit too much brown. I um, had to rem remedy it the best I could with the clear wax, and then I actually went in with some white wax. I'm just adding a little bit to the black on the bee, just to tone down that black a little bit on the bee. And this is where I'm doing the clear wax, I believe. Um, just trying to lighten up that brown a little bit. And here we go with the white wax. <laughs> well, wax, 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 lots of wax. But at least I finally got it looking more like how I wanted it to. It just took a little extra time. And here are my little bee buttons that I wanna to add to the jar and the honey dipper. But again, they are white and 
colorful, the exact opposite of what I'm doing here. So everybody gets a bath of watered down brown paint. just let it dry for a few minutes and then wiped off excess just so they were just kind of dirtied up a little bit And it's time to attach them with some hot glue. And that's going to just about do it. I do add some glaze onto the inside of my honeycomb to make it a little more shiny. But that's the final step. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's not the little cartoonish type B that a lot of people do, but it's different. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.